everyone, welcome back to another episode of World War II History and Reenacting. This is German World War II Reenacting 101. So you have done the research and either founded or joined a reenactment group. And now you want to go full immersion or take part in a major battle. Popping off blanks and going full out blitzkrieg on the enemy. But before you can go live, you have to practice. And before you can practice, you have to know the basics. But first you need some kit. So let's roll on with it, shall we? So this is what I consider the basic impression kit. It's basically the German service uniform, with some added essentials and optional items. These items essentially make up the very backbone of your impression, and it's a good place to start. Yeah, I know exactly what you're thinking. Yes, this hobby is very expensive, and that's without counting in a watch. Now you have acquired your basic kit, and you are ready to roll. But wait. Did I not forget something? That's right. The most important and possibly the single most expensive item on the basic kit list. Your boots. Invest money in good quality boots and you usually get what you pay for. This basic kit will give you a solid start in the hobby of German World War II reenacting. Keep in mind that the objects on the table are not necessarily the same types and models that you need for your impression, but the principle is the same for most German units, branches of service and time period. What I mean by that is, you will need a hat, a uniform, boots, etc. Not necessarily the ones shown in this video. There is definitely a balance between quality and price for most of us. But I urge you to rather invest in quality products and they are not necessarily the most expensive. Before purchasing anything, it is of the utmost importance that you ask your unit and have them help you buy the right things from the suppliers they recommend. If you are starting your own group, you need to do some extensive research on the uniforms and equipment utilized by that particular unit in the time period you wish to portray. You also need to set some standards about which items are acceptable, the quality and from what suppliers. Make a list that you can present to new members. It is no fun to buy things twice because of lack of research or poor quality. My main impression is of a Norwegian volunteer serving in the Waffen SS and the types of items might not be the same as your impression. You will need a service shirt. These vary in both color, material and construction, depending on unit, branch of service and time period. The shirt on the left is a grey knit shirt from at the front, and it's a typical shirt worn by the German army. It is of very good quality and has served me well. The other one is a brown service shirt made by Gavin. The quality is quite good. Yes, they are supposed to be very long. You will need at least one pair of typical issue socks or foot wraps. I personally prefer the latter. As you can see, these socks are really beat up and I will have to mend them before they fall apart on me. The socks are sold by a lot of different vendors and I believe that they are still made in Germany if I'm not mistaken. The underpants. These are actually one of the cheapest items on the list, so why not get a pair? I got mine from Schuster. 
Is it not the most basic of basic kit? Every single soldier had at least one pair of underpants at any given time. Well, maybe not everyone. <laughs> they come in an endless amount of types and variations, both for tropical, summer and winter. You could even wage war in them. You will need a basic uniform of some sort, with the basic insignia for your unit. It will typically be the lowest rank when you first start out. This particular jacket is made by At The Front, and it's a relatively faithful reproduction of overall good quality. These reproduction buttons are not totally bad, but personally I would swap them for originals. This is one of the original buttons on my current uniform for comparison. I've spent almost 100 days in this uniform, sometimes living in it for 24 hours a day for up to 10 days at a time in the field, sleeping in trenches or foxholes. It has held up very nicely and also gained some nice wear besides the initial artificial weathering I did to it. Besides the Bevo Eagle from At The Front, I would personally recommend Elsenau and Wehrmacht's Effekten on Facebook. They supply some really high quality stuff at great prices. Internal suspenders and belt hooks might not apply to all uniform types of the different branches of service, but for Army and Waffen SS it is definitely something you should acquire. Investing in original belt hooks is a small but noticeable improvement to your uniform. And the price difference is not that big anyway. There are also different types of uniform buttons and not all types are reproduced. And if they are, they might not be any good. The types of buttons you need is dependent on the unit and branch of service you want to portray. Here are two reproduction buttons. The first one is not very good. By comparing these to an original we can see a big difference. And together with the original belt hooks, swapping for original buttons is an easy and fairly cheap way of upgrading the look of your tunic. But this is totally optional. There are a few essential personal items that I recommend you include in the basic kit. This is the Solbuch. Every soldier was issued one of these. It holds your personal and military information. You could even start filling out your basic kit. If you don't know how to already, you will certainly learn how to sew to some extent, whether you want to or not. There might be swearing or even blood, but eventually it will simply become second nature. You will constantly be sewing buttons, insignia and mending uniforms and equipment. Even in the field. The sewing kit with an extra couple of buttons and patches are vital to the soldier. And there is a reason why they are still issuing sewing kits to the soldiers of modern armies today. Some original paper press buttons to replace the buttons on for example the grey service shirt is almost a must. Eating utensils are indispensable, and a spork like this is a safe bet. This one I purchased from at the front, and it has not failed me yet. It's good to have a little brush in your pocket so you can brush off your uniform and keep it nice at all times. Taking care of your leather equipment and boots is one of the most important things in German reenacting. As a soldier, you put your rifle first, your equipment second, and yourself last when it comes to maintenance. You will spend a lot of time looking after your leather and polishing it with black shoe polish to make it shine.
get good quality products. It is best if you can find a period correct container to put it in. Get two shoe brushes. A watch, not necessarily a wristwatch, is an optional thing, as time to a soldier can be really important. This is a cheap watch that did not last even a day in the field. A better period correct or an original wrist or pocket watch is the way to go. This item is optional. You will need trousers. Again, there are many variations. The bottom pair is made by Sturm and the one on top are my current trousers, made by at the front. These have also seen the same use as my uniform jacket and I have made some minor field repairs to them. Even if you don't think you need them, get them. Suspenders are essential. Try finding some period correct civilian ones. Try looking on eBay. As mentioned earlier, there are many different models and variations. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Here are the three main basic caps. The side cap is the basic of the basic and is a safe bet for almost any impression. This is my heavily worn example made by At The Front, the textile version. As you can see, it has seen a lot of use. A little tip to keep your gear from getting mixed with others is to put period correct name tag labels on your cloth items. Here is a modified one with added white piping and a private purchase skull badge. This was fairly common in my particular unit. This is known as a ski cap and was used by the mountain troops. This particular one is made by SM Wilson. And this one is more of a mid to late war thing. It's known as the M43 field cap. This one is also made by SM Wilson. As mentioned earlier, Boots is probably the single most important thing and one of the most expensive. The first thing you should buy is a pair of quality boots. And quality boots generally take three to six months to make or even longer because handmade quality shoes simply take a long time to make and there is generally a long waiting list. Do not opt for low quality or the East German boots you will simply be disappointed. And this is why you should take care of your leather items. You will need a service belt with buckle of good quality. I have tried a lot of different vendors, but so far nothing comes close to Vincent made leather equipment. Vincent is where I buy all my leather equipment besides boots. Old at the front belt buckle on the left and a high quality reproduction made to fool collectors on the right. The price is almost double but well worth it if you are looking for a high quality and detailed impression. You will need a bayonet. It's part of the service uniform. Depending on the laws in your country, I would definitely urge you to consider getting an original bayonet. These are my reenacting bayonets, all original. These are called bayonet frogs. This is what a K98 bayonet looks like. Here are two reproduction bayonet frogs made by different manufacturers. The one on the left is an unused Vincent made. This is how the bayonet and frog fits together. These two items are not technically part of the service uniform, 
but I added them to the list because they are very important if you are going to a reenactment portraying a soldier. A well organized and established reenactment group will usually make food as a group. Therefore when you are served it is nice to have something authentic to eat from and you already have your eating utensils. The canteen is very important as a soldier's worst enemy is dehydration. On the left is an original and on the right a poor reproduction. This original I have used ever since I first started reenacting and it still serves me well. As you can see I have done some repairs to it. But this cover was in this state originally. The straps are reproductions made by Vincent. I will highly recommend using an original bottle, but only if it's aluminum. If it's painted on the inside, don't use it. A little pro tip is to leave the bottle open when not in use. Trust me. The mess tin is where you put your food when served. And you can even use it to pack food in for events in these early stages of your impression when going to events without organized food. This is a little inexpensive tie for the SS, typically used while on leave with an open collar. Whether you are starting your own reenactment group or joining one, there is one key factor for getting a good impression besides looking the part. And that is knowledge about the soldier's life. I want to recommend getting these books for starters. It can be purchased at germanmanuals.com. This one is translated to English, along with many other interesting manuals. You might be lucky to join a unit that will provide you with a basic manual. We made this one for members in our group. And we also provide a soldier's guide to the German language for foreign volunteers. Our new recruits find these very helpful. With this basic kit, you can portray a German soldier in a non-combat environment. And it's a solid foundation to build on, as you in the future expand your impression to include weapons, field gear, etc. That's all for now, until next time, auf Wiedersehen!